So Bridget, we're going to look at some now that involve this integer language. Um, there's three types that I'm picking up on. Consecutive integers, consecutive even integers, consecutive odd integers. And again, consecutive kind of means one after the other. So if I'm talking about consecutive integers, they meet this kind of pattern here. You know, The most common ones we don't pick up on is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. They can keep on going out forever. So if I'm talking about you know, 50, the next integer after 50 would be like 51, then 52. Or if I'm going back the other direction, 50, I can go back to 49, back to 48. So don't forget, you can also go this direction. So 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. That pattern is also representing consecutive integers. You also should notice that each time you go by next to another integer, all you're doing is increasing by 1. So to go from 0 to 1, you're increasing by 1. Going from 0 to 2, you're increasing by 1. 2 to 3, you're increasing by 1. So what I'm picking up on is, if I let x be the first integer, the next integer after it should be one bigger. So x plus 1 should represent the next integer after the first integer. And then if you have to increase two more places, that means you've got to add a 2 to the original value to get to your third integer. So the third integer is going to be two more than the first integer. And then the fourth integer is going to actually be three more than the first integer. So if you add 1, that moves you to the next integer. If you add 2, that gets you to the third integer. If you add 3, that gets you to the fourth integer. So for instance, if I said um, 7 was the first integer, then 7 plus 1 is going to represent the second integer. 7 plus 2 is going to represent the third integer. And 7 plus 3 would represent the fourth integer. And I can keep on going. And we kind of see that that would be a 7, that would be an 8, that would be a 9, and that would be a 10. So this is a way we can represent those uh, consecutive integers. If I'm looking at the um, consecutive even integers, notice that 0 is an even number, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Those are all even numbers, and they keep going on forever as well. 10, 12, 14. If I went out further, you know, 224 is an integer even. 226 would be a consecutive even integer. 228 would be the next one after that. So what we pick up on, though, is when I talk about consecutive integers, if I start at, say, 4, the next integer over is 2 more. The next integer over is 2 more. The next integer over is two more. So if you're going to try to move from even integer to even integer, you have to add two to get to the next even integer. So if I say x is the first integer, I gotta add two to that to get to the second integer. I gotta add four to that to represent the third even integer. I gotta add six to that to get to the fourth even integer, and so forth and so on. It kind of fits that pattern here. So if you're talking about consecutive even integers, we use this notation x is the first, x plus two is the second even integer, x plus 4 is the third even integer, and keep on going like that. Consecutive odd numbers, again, look like this. You know, 1, 3, 5, 7, 11, those are your odd numbers. If I look at it, you know, if I go from, uh, say, 3 to 5, notice how that increases by 2. 5 to a 7, that increases by 2. Uh, 7, oops, I left off one, didn't I? After 7, actually, it would become what? That would actually be uh, 9, wouldn't it? So I would add 2 to that, and that would give me back to 9. So if you look at uh, consecutive odd numbers, they also increase by 2. So consecutive odd numbers can be represented just like consecutive even integers. So you have x is the first integer, x plus 2 is the second odd integer, x plus 4 is the third consecutive odd integer, and x plus 6 is the, that fourth consecutive odd integer. So I can use that kind of representation. So let's look at this problem here. Three consecutive odd integers are such that their sum is a negative three. What are the integers? Well, looking over here, what jumps out at me is a negative one, a one, and a three. Those would be consecutive odd integers. And they would actually add up to a, a three. So, but if I go the other direction, a one, a negative one, and a negative three, again, that one, a negative one, would zero out, and I would get that negative three as my, my next one. So negative three, negative one, and one would be your consecutive uh, odd integers, just by looking at that chart there, without even doing any algebra. 
I can kind of see just by looking at this pattern here that those three numbers meet this condition. They're consecutive odd, and their sum is a negative 3. So I don't have to use an equation to solve this. But if I am going to use an equation, I am going to let um, x be the first, x plus 2 will be the second, and x plus 4 would have to be the third. And it says their sum is a negative 3. So that's telling me that I'm adding these together. So I have an x, an x plus 2, and an x plus 4. And that all together should equal then a, a negative 3. So this is where you can pause the video if you wanted to and just go ahead and solve it on your own because you're pretty good at this. So feel free to do that. And then after you solve it, play the video and see if it uh, plays out the way you see it. So again, you're seeing like terms, x plus x plus x is going to be 3x, 2 plus 4 is 6, and I end up with this negative 3. I then have to zero out this 6 with a negative 6. We end up with 3x equals a negative 9. If we divide by 3, x is going to equal then a negative 3. So that's going to be my first integer. So negative 3 is the first one. And then if I do negative 3 plus 2, that should rep represent my second one. So negative 3 plus 2, that's going to equal then a negative 1. And then negative 3 plus 4, negative 3 plus 4 should represent my third integer. Negative 3 plus 4 would be a positive 1. So what I'm seeing is negative 3, negative 1, and 1, those are my three consecutive odd integers whose sum is a negative 3. So again, you don't have to use algebra to solve it. You can kind of play with it, make out some notes, and hopefully it all comes together and makes some better sense there. Okay. So I think you have a couple more we'll do, so stay tuned and we'll try a few more.